But let's talk about the fine tuning argument if we can, Bill. Uh, it kind of uh, give an overview of that for us, would you? Sure. One of the most remarkable discoveries of contemporary astrophysics is that the Big Bang was not a chaotic, unordered event. Rather, from the very beginning, the universe is characterized by certain constants and certain quantities in nature that are incredibly fine-tuned to permit the existence of embodied conscious life. Mm. If even one of these fundamental constants or quantities would, were to be altered by a hair's breadth, uh, the universe would be life-prohibiting. Hmm. So the question that scientists have grappled with is what is the best explanation of this remarkable fine-tuning of the cosmos? And in the scientific literature, there are basically three proffered explanations. Either physical necessity, they had to be this way, mm -hmm. Second, chance, it's just an accident that mm -hmm. they have values, or thirdly, design, they were designed to have these values. And so an argument for a cosmic designer would go like this. Premise one, the fine tuning of the universe is due to either physical necessity, chance, or design. Premise two, it is not due to physical necessity or chance. And here you would present arguments against those alternatives from which it follows logically three, or it is due to design. Bill, what is the most persistent objection you hear to the fine-tuning argument? Well, among students who are not informed about these things, the most probable objection is that the universe is not fine-tuned for our existence. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, physics does not exhibit the sort of fine-tuning that I've just described to you. That is patently false, however. The multiplicity and the variety of constants and quantities that have to be fine-tuned in this way is so great that the probability that any future physics will ever eliminate it entirely is highly, highly unlikely. So hmm. among scientists, among physicists who are informed, the most prominent objection is the multiverse. Hmm. Hmm that if our universe is the only one it is, then the odds that it would be fine-tuned in the way that it is are just impossible to face. It, it, the chances are uh, practically infinitesimal. And therefore, what they do is they multiply their probabilistic resources by imagining that there is a multiverse, an array of worlds of which our universe is just a member, and moreover, all of these worlds are randomly ordered in their constants and quantities so that by chance alone, if this ensemble of worlds is infinite, then finely tuned worlds will appear somewhere in the ensemble. And lo and behold, here we are. We happen to be in this one, but nothing to be surprised about given the multi, uh, multiverse of randomly tuned worlds. So this is the major alternative to a designer today, uh, the multiverse hypothesis. And what would be your first comeback to this wild speculation for which there's no evidence? <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from what you just said, Roger Penrose, uh, of Oxford University has offered a really powerful argument against using the multiverse to explain fine tuning. And it's basically this, that in order for observers to exist, you don't have to have a world that is fine tuned like our universe is. You can have a universe which is no larger than our solar system, um, where you have an island of order and a sea of chaos outside of that. And that sort of universe is vastly more probable than a finely mm -hmm. universe like ours. In fact, the most probable observable universe would be an even smaller universe, one that consists of a single brain that fluctuates into being out of the quantum vacuum with illusory perceptions of an external world. So if you appeal to the multiverse hypothesis, um, you have no way 
of knowing whether or not you are an ordinary observer like us or whether or not, in fact, you are a Boltzmann brain, as they're called, with the illusory perception of a world that does not exist. I like what Paul Davy says about this. He's an agnostic astronomer. He says uh, the, the multiverse is a dodge <laughs> because the ev- no one would be no one would be positing multiple universes if the evidence for design wasn't so strong. You know, uh, now that, that's a further objection: is that it's ad hoc in mm-hmm. that it's postulated simply to explain away the fine tuning, but there's no independent evidence to believe that such mm. a exists. Mm. Whereas in the case of theism, we have many independent arguments, like the Kalam cosmological mm. argument mm-hmm. and others, that there is such a transcendent creator of the universe, so that it isn't ad hoc in the way that the multiverse uh, hypothesis is. 